name is Jonathan Larson, and I'm a physics postdoctoral scholar at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory, where I work in the Energy Storage and Distributed Resources Division, uh, and I'm a member of the Kostetsky Group. Uh, in addition to this, I'm also an affiliate of the IR Group at the ALS. Uh, thanks so much for taking the time to listen to my talk. Uh, today I'm going to be speaking uh, with you about nano FTIR of buried electrochemical energy storage interfaces and interphases. And starting right off the bat, I'd like to just splash up a quick uh, schematic here of an anode electrolyte interface that would be common in a lithium ion battery. Um, and what happens uh, upon adjoining these two materials and then with subsequent electrochemical processes is that there is a growth of an interphase uh, that is both chemically distinct and structurally unique uh, and is actually uh, very critical to battery function and operation. Uh, across this interphase will shuttle lithium ions, but it will restrict the flow of electrons that would cause continued degradation of the electrochemical cell. Because of the absolute um, kind of central importance to the interphase, as new chemistries and technologies are proposed, there's kind of an increasing need to be able to characterize these interfaces and kind of glean a better basic understanding of how they really function. Because like I say, they're, they're totally critical to uh, the battery success. And over the years, uh, our kind of state-of-the-art understanding of these interfaces has changed dramatically. And this is because, uh, in large part, these interfaces are dynamic, they're chemically heterogeneous, they're nano-thin, they're very reactive. In a nutshell, they're hard to study, and especially in situ, and especially non-destructively. And so we see in our group that there's at least three major needs um, to kind of advancing new novel methodologies. And, and they are the need for nanoscale resolution, the need for uh, non-destructive characterization, and the need for uh, characterization of these interfaces within their native environment. And I've just listed here on the right uh, our solutions for these, AFM, uh, nano FTIR for the non nanoscale, uh, for the non-destructive component, tapping mode and uh, the low energies afforded by infrared light. Uh, and then finally, how we access the native environment is through multifunctional graphene membranes, as described in the following. So it is very common to attempt to characterize um, interfaces from the electrolyte side. But this comes with a whole host of challenges. Uh, and so we have pioneered new approaches with our collaborators to investigate these interfaces from the side of the working electrode. And this is done by making the working electrode nanothin and infrared transparent, and thereby enabling us to characterize the interface within its native environment and eliminating all those other challenges previously mentioned. And the material that we use for this is monolayer graphene. So splashed up here are kind of like two uh, uh, TOC type images of two of the recent publications of which I am a co-first author on each uh, that utilize this approach of uh, graphene membranes, which function as both infrared transparent window and model working electrode. And the first one that I'd like to discuss with you uh, is the one based on liquid electrolytes. So this work came out in 2019 in nano letters, and in the top left um, is a schematic of the liquid cell that was used to accomplish this work. Uh, and in the bottom left is a schematic of uh, one of the uh, holes in, in the perforated silicon nitride membrane. And to start the work and to demonstrate that we could take a uh, nano FTIR spectrum of uh, the liquid environments through the backside of the graphene, we first tested this with water, which is displayed in the top middle and compared to the ATR FTIR measurement of water, and then as well as anhydrous propylene carbonate, which is bottom middle. And so those were very, very nice and exciting spectra. Um, but then what was really cool was um, we moved to uh, a salt-rich solution, basic salt-rich solution, but one that would uh, afford it afford us uh, the opportunity to investigate um, an interface or uh, a region at the interface that was different from the bulk. So if some of you have read kind of introductory uh, electrochemistry textbooks, uh, when there's a salt in the solution, 
uh, the interfacial region will have, uh, you know, a, a, a double layer and a diffuse layer. Uh, and those kind of interfacial regions will also be sensitive uh, to bias that's applied. And so what we found first and foremost was that when we took nano FTIR of uh, a graphene interfaced with 0.1 molar ammonium sulfate in water, we found that there was unique interface specific species that were present that were not ever recorded in the ATR FTIR. Only the nano FTIR had them. And then excitingly, when we applied biases to these, they'd actually change in relative intensity, just kind of like what's predicted in the electrochemistry textbooks. So this was a really uh, good accomplishment for our group, we felt, uh, and kind of uh, was utilized as a springboard to move on to other things. But kind of the big conclusions were that um, uh, the measurement of liquids and liquid environments with broadband nano FTIR were, was possible, and um, especially that we were sensitive to interfacial chem interfacial chemistries. Uh, and th those three ends that I referenced earlier were accomplished, that we were able to look at this uh, interface uh, with nanoscale uh, uh, sensitivity uh, in a non-destructive fashion and within their native environment. And so the most recent work that came out here in Nature Communications, I believe in March of this year, uh, is what I'd like to talk about next. And this was a solid polymer electrolyte that was utilized. And also, furthermore, the device um, had a, a, a proper kind of uh, uh, counter and reference electrode in, in, in actually having lithium foil. And so what we did in this case is we collected nano FTIR and ATR at uh, four uh, electrochemical states of the device, uh, in the pristine state, uh, in the heated state, um, and then after plating, and then after stripping. And so down at the bottom here are cross-sectional illustrations of, of what the interfa interfacial region may look like based upon the data we collected. Uh, but ultimately, as I hope I'll be able to convince you of, we were able to glean from the nano FTIR data important physiochemical information uh, that we could uh, correlate to the processes that end up resulting in uh, inhomogeneous uh, SEI formation and uh, electrolyte decomposition. Oh, and I'll just mention before I go to the next slide that the chemistry, uh, stoichiometry of the solid state electrolyte here is PEO10 LITFSI. So in the left column, you see nano FTIR absorption uh, data of the uh, pristine interface. And then in the center column, uh, spatially dependent nano FTIR data after heating. And they're color coded to, uh, to match where they're collected. And while I don't have enough time to kind of justify each one of these points. You can certainly uh, look to the Nature Communications paper for more details. What we found is that the intrinsic solid polymer electrolyte interface has variations in salt concentration, in PEO orientation, and TFSI orientation and configurations. And this is all on a spatial scale of about 100 nanometer separations. And that after heating, while uh, these heterogeneities decrease, they don't uh, vanish altogether. They still persist to some extent, which is uh, made kind of visible by uh, the uh, kind of the width of this uh, error bar band here in, in pink. And so this is actually uh, relevant for subsequent electrochemical processes because uh, intrinsic to this common solid polymer electrolyte are nanoscale heterogeneities, which will give rise to heterogeneities in lithium ion conductivity uh, because it's known that some of these physical chemical properties such as salt concentration are directly correlated with lithium ion conductivity. And when we look at the uh, interface post plating, that's precisely what we find. We find um, uh, a heterogene heterogeneous, uh, both in structure and in white light imaging. You can see that there's a lot of contrast in the white light image, uh, which we attribute to nanoscale heterogeneities in lithium plating. And this is uh, further supported by actually um, 
uh, heterogeneities within suppressed absorption features. So let me draw your attention to just two traces, the, the blue and the green. These two correspond to point three, which has a lot of uh, white light uh, response, and the green, which has very little white light response. And so just think in the limit of infinite lithium, right? You're not going to have any DC uh, uh, absorption signals, they're all going to be screened out, right? Um, but if you have no or little lithium, then the DC signal probably won't be screened out as much. Or by DC, I'm saying like the, the lower frequencies. Um, and so that's exactly what we find. And we, actually, there was a linear correlation between those that you can can see in, in the paper. Um, and it's also seen in the uh, nano FTI reflection. But we, the point is, is that we were able to uh, quantitatively connect that the uh, intrinsic heterogeneities within the solid polymer electrolyte at roughly 100 nanometer uh, separations uh, kind of gives rise to this uh, inhomogeneous lithium plating on a similar spatial scale. Another finding uh, was that of um, the emergence of new vibrational modes. Uh, this is just an example here for C double bond O. But what this tells us is that uh, an SEI is forming uh, in, an, in, an, in an inhomogeneous way uh, and or uh, that uh, there is inhomogeneous electrolyte decomposition. Another really important uh, finding of looking at this data is actually the absence of peaks that um, indicate PEO is crystalline. Now, I didn't show this data earlier, but in the pristine and the heated uh, uh, cases, there are two very clear peaks between 800 uh, and 1,000 that exist. Uh, and if you look at the ATR for this exact same interface, okay, so for the, for the after plating case, those two peaks still exist. So what does this tell us? There's a discrepancy in the spectra between nano FTIR and the ATR. So what this is telling us is that the bulk is still in its semi-crystalline state. Okay, there's still a good bit of the PEO that's crystalline. But at the interface, within the interfacial region, that the, the plating process has caused a PEO therein to become amorphous. So there's been a phase transformation there. Um, and uh, this is important for lithium ion kinetics because uh, it's also well known that lithium ions more readily transport uh, through amorphous PEO than they do crystalline PEO, which is uh, an interesting finding that this naturally arises. Okay, so let's turn now to the final state, which is the, the stripped state. So this is after we've stripped uh, the lithium away, and we should be left with just um, the SEI. And so we see now an interface that looks completely different from the original pictures that we were looking you know, at, the, the, the large high aspect ratio nanoscale grains. Now we have kind of more uh, micro or mesoscale large grains. And, and we found that there was two almost types of SEI, which are supposed to be represented by the orange and the green uh, absorption spectra and correlated uh, dots. And I, I might just note that we also find that uh, there's that structure isn't necessarily correlated with chemistry here, which is an interesting finding. Uh, so, so, so for instance, here, this is associated more with like SEI region one, and five here is associated more with SEI region two. And some of the differences in the chemistry and, and, and whatnot, and some of the similarities are concisely shown uh, here in this Venn diagram. And again, I'd encourage those of you who are interested to take a look at the Nature Communications paper, uh, because of course that's where all the details will be. So uh, we, we found that nanoscale heterogeneities implicit to interfacial solid polymer electrolyte are likely the origin of non-uniform plating and stripping, electrolyte decomposition, and SEI formation, and that molecular level engineering is needed to overcome these challenges if solid polymer batteries are to be commercially viable in the future. And some key general conclusions were that uh, a methodology was developed that can characterize electrochemically active buried interfaces and interfaces within their undisturbed native environments, and it is uh, amenable to a whole host of other chemistries uh, and battery storage 
uh, strategies. And so we hope to use this technique a lot more in the future. And so with that, I'd like to say thanks to my collaborators and funding sources and for your attention. Thank you very much.